How to change the tire on your Nami Bernie. Tools required. Three tire levers, three mil, four mil, and five mil Allen keys, 21 mil socket, and a valve remover if you have one. First, deflate your tire with the valve remover. Remove the valve core. You can do this later, but we do it now so we don't forget. Use the four mil Allen key to loosen and remove the screws and back plates which hold the motor wire in place. Now you don't have to do this, but we recommend removing the caliper so as not to bend the disc. Use a five mil Allen key, and then once you've taken it off, place it carefully on the deck for safety. Now we're going to remove the wheel nuts. You'll need the 21 millimeter socket wrench. Loosen both nuts. Once you've removed one, make sure to support the wheel as when you remove the second, the wheel is gonna be loose and can drop out. Make sure you have a table or a bench or a stool next to you to rest the wheel on. Now remove the washers and store them safely. Using the three mil Allen key, remove the disc screws. They are locked tighted in place, so a bit of heat will make loosening them much easier. We use a heat gun here, but you could potentially use a hairdryer, but it would take you quite a long time. Be careful not to burn yourself on the hot metal once you've heated it up. Now, remove the disc and store this safely with the screws out of the way. Now it's time to remove the tire. First, you need to break the bead. Use the tire levers to press down on the edge to do this. Now insert the levers to move them into the scissor position and lever the tire from the rim. From here, you can use your hands to complete the job. Now your tire's removed, it's time to refit the new tire. First thing to remember is most tires are directional. Normally there's an arrow on the tire to show which way the wheel should turn. We use tire paste to lubricate the bead, which makes it easier to seat the tire on the rim. Once you are sure of the tire direction, press it over the motor. Place one lever in at around six o'clock and you can use your foot to secure it in place. Do this if you're on your own. Obviously, if you have someone helping you, they can just hold this one in place. The second lever is then placed in at around two o'clock and pushed over, which pulls the tire over the rim. Once this is done, replace the valve core. Then inflate to the recommended PSI, which will be on the side of the tire. We normally inflate to the maximum PSI to seat the bead, then reduce it if necessary for personal preference. Now the tire has been seated, it is a good opportunity to clean up the wheel before you put it back on. Once the wheel is clean, it's now time to replace the disc. Discs, like tires, can be rotational, so make sure it's facing the right way and then seat it. We recommend to Loctite the disc screws before replacing. We use one drop per screw of Loctite 243, which is medium strength. Once the screws are in and fitted securely, it's time to fit the wheel back onto the scooter. Remember the washers fit either side of the axle. Slide onto the swing arms, making sure the wheel is the right way round. Once firmly seated, place the locking washers onto either side. We add Loctite 243 to the axle either side of the wheel and then fit the wheel nuts. For safety, follow manufacturer's guidelines for torque settings. For the Bernie, the recommended torque is 110 Nm. For this, you will require a torque wrench. Now it's time to replace the motor cable and clips. There is a channel in the back of the swing arm that the cable can sit in. For info, the motor wire should always face down, not up so the wire can sit properly inside the swing arm. Fit the motor cable clips and again use a bit of Loctite 243 and the 4mm Allen key. Finally, we replace the caliper using the 5mm Allen key. Again, we use Loctite 243 and just nip them up, tight but not overly tight. The Loctite again will do the job for you. Now finally, we put the dust cover back on and the job is complete.